Damon Salvatore, the attractive bad boy with a dark past and soft heart that he hides away. He's tough, cool, funny, brave, and very hot. All the things that make him a good character, right? Today, I'll be analyzing how Damon Salvatore could have been one of the best characters in the Vampire Diaries, where it went wrong, and why he didn't reach that. Remember though, these are all my opinions and my thoughts. Furthermore, this analysis will be done on Damon Salvatore from the television show, as I did read the first two books in the series, but could not finish them. We'll also be going into detail on Damon in season one of the show, and after that, not so much. I'm also going to try and do this without changing much of the plot lines in the show. But before I begin... So, let's get into it, starting with a little exposition of this confusing show. The Vampire Diaries is about a human girl, Elena, and two vampire brothers, Damon and Stefan, who love her. Stefan is in a relationship with Elena first, starting in the very first episode of season one, posing as a high school student in order to meet her. Now, Elena is the exact lookalike, doppelganger of Catherine, a vampire both Stefan and Damon loved in the 1800s when they were both humans. Damon was never compelled, meaning mind controlled, to forget or feel anything by Catherine, whereas Stefan was. Damon truly loved everything about Catherine, and she is the one who turned both of the brothers into vampires. Unfortunately, Catherine died before they became full vampires in a fire. Are you still with me? Moving on, first, we'll be talking about Damon's setup. Damon. Hello, brother. Damon Salvatore has a strong introduction, probably one of the most memorable introductions for a TV character. Instantly, he is introduced as an antagonist, and the writers do a good job at placing mystery around who he is. We do find out he is Stefan's brother, and through dialogue, get the information we need about these brothers' past. Of course, this is later introduced in flashbacks, but the main thing we know is that the two brothers are not close to each other, have not spoken in years, and that they despise each other. Their relationship is, as the show is, really complicated. It is Stefan who forces Damon to become a vampire in the first place, and Stefan carries this guilt for the rest of his life. It is Damon who hates Stefan because he blames him for Catherine's death, and also Damon who causes Stefan to become the Ripper of Monterey, a serial killer. But moving on, Damon and Elena's first meeting is also very well done. There's so much tension, and when he reveals that small snippet about Elena being a rebound, mentioning Catherine... It's about time. For a while there, I never thought he'd get over the last one. Nearly destroyed him. The last one? Yeah, Catherine, his girlfriend. Or maybe he didn't want to tell you because he didn't want you to think he was on the rebound. We truly see that he is the antagonist, and that he wants to ruin Stefan's relationship. He's further set up as the bad guy when he takes Caroline, Elena's friend, as a victim he continuously mind controls and abuses. Most humans amuse Damon, Caroline is just another plaything, which Elena is also when he first meets her. All the characters in this show do terrible things, but if they didn't, we wouldn't have a show. So moving on, this is one scene I really like. I'm sorry. About Catherine. You lost her too. We see that Damon does in fact have humanity, and the actor does amazing acting to convey at this point Damon starts seeing Elena as more than just a human, more of just a copy of Catherine. Of course, not enough as he later tries to compel Elena into kissing him. And when Stefan even confronts Damon about having the ability to care, Damon retaliates by killing. But we're not stupid enough to fall for that. 
Damon continues to mess with Stefan, and he continues being the bad guy. Some instances of where we see Damon actually having humanity is when he saves Stefan from dying. Of course, he then says this. If anyone's gonna kill you, it's gonna be me. We also see how intelligent Damon is when he tricks the town's secret council, a group of people who want to protect everyone from vampires, that he can be trusted when he's the very thing they're hunting. Another strain on Stefan and Damon's relationship is when Damon kills Lexi, Stefan's best friend. But there's nothing wrong with that in Damon's character. Sure, I didn't like it, but he's not close to Stefan yet, and this moment displays his intelligence as he's trying to hide that he's a vampire to the council. And it develops the anti-hero I thought the show was going for. Damon later reveals that Catherine didn't die in a fire, and that she's been alive inside a tomb, along with other vampires from the 1800s, and that's why he came back in the first place, to get her out. As I said, this show is really complicated. Damon's been waiting 150 years to get Catherine out. Talk about patience! But after finding out Catherine was never in this tomb, and that she's been alive this entire time, not giving a crap about Damon, Damon is heartbroken. But he decides to stay in the town he intended to destroy when more trouble arises. And this is when he begins to fall in love with Elena. So far, his setup is actually pretty good. The rivalry between the two brothers actually begins to vanish slightly as the other vampires in the tomb are released. When Stefan is taken by these two vampires who have nothing better to do, Damon worries for his little brother and wants to save him. Mm, beautiful weather. Not a ray sun in the sky. Where's my brother? Billy. You are dead. Oh, I'm sorry. Damon does more anti-hero things, like tempting Stefan with blood because he does want his brother to be able to control his bloodlust, but at the same time, knows that Stefan drinks animal blood for this very reason, that he can't control it, creating a bump in Stefan and Elena's relationship when Stefan goes on a killing spree. Near the end of the first season, Damon does become an anti-hero. He's more of an ally now, but he could always go and become the antagonist. It's also revealed to everyone at the end of the season that Damon loves Elena. And while knowing this, Stefan saves Damon from a fire despite at the beginning of the season, both of these brothers hating each other. Now this is what the focus should have been. The relationship between two brothers brought back together by a human girl, which would have done wonders for Damon's character. Sadly, the show doesn't focus on this until the last two and a half seasons, after Elena is gone. The last episode of season one really shines for Damon. He thanks Bonnie, Elena's friend who is a witch, for saving him when technically she didn't, when before he did not care, even saying that he owes her one. Thank you. The device that Emily spelled could have killed me. I don't take what you did lightly, so thank you. I did it for Elena. I know that, but I'm still very grateful. And I owe you. He later even owns up to his wrongdoings to Jeremy, Elena's younger brother. What I did to Vicky was wrong. Sorry for my part. So Damon later kisses Catherine, thinking it's Elena. But it happens slowly because he waits for her to give him permission. He waits for her to want it too, which is well done. He also says that Stefan is the good one, thinking he's the bad one. I don't do good. It's not in me. Now it's reserved for my brother, and you, and Bonnie. While still not close to each other, Damon doesn't want to destroy Stefan like he said. Once again, keeping plot lines consistent, this is the best way Damon could have made a move on Elena, his brother's girl, when he really shouldn't have. So far, Damon is complex and his development is amazing. His arc is well set up for the rest of the show that he's an anti-hero type 
who may sometimes be the antagonist, but sometimes be the ally. A really interesting character with tons of room for growth. But it all gets ruined in the very first episode of Season 2. Now that Catherine is alive, she returns in Season 2. And when Damon pours his heart out to her and gets this response... The truth is... I've never loved you. It was always Devin. He's heartbroken! After getting drunk, Damon goes to Elena in a rebound kind of fashion. It has been set up that Damon trusts Elena, that he confides in her, but what he does is sexually assault her and kill her brother. The easiest thing in the world. The part of you that cares, it just goes away. All you have to do is flip the switch and stop. Why? Why? This ruins his character for me, because I did like Damon, I'm gonna admit that. He was funny, cool, intelligent, sarcastic, and he has a caring heart that he keeps locked away. He actually is a badass, and he doesn't think he deserves someone to love him. But after this scene, this is ruined because first of all the circumstances it occurred under, a rebound fashion, and because after this the relationship between him and Elena still happens, doesn't make sense to me. And it only gets worse from here. Although Jeremy doesn't die, Damon does this, which you don't do to anyone, more so the family of someone you love. He's a vampire, so yes, he can be rough, like when he does this. Let me do it for her. <laughs> but going this extreme to, as I said, a family member of someone he loves, does not make sense. Even if he thinks he's lost his chances with Elena, Season 1 was setting him up to be a better person. Now, if he didn't love Elena and followed the anti-hero trope, this scene would be different. Damon even tells Elena that he'd let anyone die if it meant she'd be safe, specifying Bonnie, who would die using all her magic to protect Elena from the new threat in Season 2. Not caring about her at all after she helped Stefan get Damon out of the fire in Season 1. His development takes a step backwards. Does he not remember this? Me alone. Thank you. Oh, Bonnie. Even though she has every reason to hate me, still help Stefan save me. Looking at this scene, it actually seems as if Damon truly loves Stefan now. I don't deserve you. But my brother does. But his development is gone because Damon later chooses Elena over Stefan. This is where it goes wrong. It should have been Elena initiating everything with Damon, like in this scene. We'll survive this. So that Damon and Stefan's bond stayed strong. So that they chose each other over a girl. Now, I'm not saying Damon should be perfect. He has flaws, such as making rash decisions, which are not right all the time, but make him a complex character which make him interesting. In fact, season two ends with Stefan leaving Elena, the love of his life, so that his brother can live. Season three does not do Stefan's sacrifice and Damon's character justice, as even though Damon is looking for Stefan at the beginning of the season, he lays in bed with Elena, looks through her underwear, and shows himself naked. Do you guys remember that this is his brother's girl? Damon should not have done these things to respect his brother, and the relationship between Elena and Damon could have continued to develop through dialogue and less, dare I say it, jerk acts. Seasons 4 and 5 center around Damon and Elena being in a relationship. Now, I'm not going to make this video on why these two should not be together, but we'll say that once they are in a relationship, Damon's character becomes way worse. His development slides backwards even more. He is only a good person towards Elena, and nobody else, and further is only good when he is in a relationship with her. The writers repeatedly say this over and over and shove it in the viewer's face. It's not just that she makes him a better person, and she does, but... I know my brother, and I know he's a better person with you than without you. And after these two break up, Damon kills Elena's friend in retaliation. How is this development? 
I thought you broke my heart, so I rip open Aaron's neck. That is how much control you have over me. And I'm still here. That's how much control you have over me. Listen to us. This is toxic. We are in a toxic relationship, Lena. I just killed your friend, and you find someone else to blame. It just ruins everything that Damon's character becomes centered on Elena. His choices depend on her, when he could have been an anti-hero. Unpredictable. Maybe even an anti-hero like Loki from Marvel, that they were setting up all the way back in Season 1. He doesn't care about anyone but Elena, acting like a total jerk to everyone else. Besides, maybe Sheriff Forbes because she's kind of his friend. And Damon doesn't even notice that Stefan is gone for three months? His own brother? Granted, no one really does, but Stefan is his brother and they are much closer now. It's only in Season 6, when Damon is away from Elena, that he finally bonds with someone else, which is Bonnie. Here, he starts being nicer to someone other than Elena, and the writers do go back on the right track. But even so, Damon's character still centers on Elena in the seasons 7 and 8, when she isn't even there. Now, on to what the writers should have done with Damon, while keeping the plot consistent. They had the setup right in season 1, and so they should have kept Damon as a wild card, an anti-hero, while at the same time, slowly falling in love with Elena, but keeping it to himself and developing a stronger bond with his brother making it obvious that this show is not about two brothers fighting over the same girl, but two brothers brought back together by her, which the show chose to focus on more in the last two seasons, as both brothers begin to risk their lives for each other and begin to choose each other over love. In the last episode of the entire series, both brothers try to save each other, finally choosing each other. It is Stefan, though, that ends up sacrificing his life in relationship with Caroline, so Damon doesn't have to sacrifice his entire life, but Damon was willing to. More so, Damon should wait for Stefan to give him permission to be with Elena, which would eventually happen because throughout the series, Stefan wants Damon to be happy. And it shouldn't take Damon three months to notice how strange it is that Stefan is gone without a call or text even if he thinks that his brother is mad at him for now dating Elena. Damon should have been kinder to supporting characters early and become the older brother Stefan needed sooner instead of this all starting later in season six. There were small moments before in earlier seasons. Shut up. You don't get to thank me until I pay you back for all those times you saved me. But if Damon hadn't been Elena's puppy dog, hadn't made all his decisions based on Elena only, there would have been room for his bond with Stefan to develop while Elena was still around, and his bonds with other characters, making this last scene much more memorable. brother's relationship had been executed better. And that's all I have to say today. Please comment your thoughts below and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more content.